SpaceX 1000 gigabit service might be just right around the corner. Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of misty morning and focus combination. So good, so good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is going to be a spacey day. We've been talking about SpaceX and their new version three satellites that are coming out just shortly, let's say. We see IFT-7 is about ready to launch in less than a week. And there is word that there's going to be some prototypes of the new satellites on board. We don't know this is to be 100% factual, but this is what we're hearing down the grapevine. But either way, I personally think that they will be deploying satellites. According to what I'm hearing, about 10 of them, but they could be dummy in nature. Maybe the same weight, maybe the same height, size, mass, girth, whatever you want to call it, so that they can see if they actually can deploy them through that little Pez dispenser at the top. So we'll see what ends up happening. I don't think they're going to be actual working satellites, but who knows? Um, so 10 of them will be deployed or at least attempted to be deployed. So I was reading an article over on cord cutters and a couple other articles that talk about this and what it's going to mean for us. What are the speeds going to be like with these new satellites? What's the latency? So on and so forth. And they did a good job of kind of boiling it all down. I took a few other articles. I combined the two together, actually like four together. And I want to read this to you so you get an idea once again, um, what to expect. What can we expect from this new era, let's say, of communication that SpaceX Starlink will be providing the world in a very short period of time? So before we get into this article, I want to say that if you enjoy the content, throw it a thumbs up. That'd be very helpful. Don't forget to share the channel and the video with your friends, family, colleagues, Reddit, Facebook, wherever. That's very helpful. Also, if you haven't subscribed, consider doing so. If you have, thank you. Click this little notification button over here so when I go live, when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And if you just want to say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a thank you button right down here. You can give a dollar or two if you like. If not, it's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. They are free just for you being here. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Once again, jchristina.com forward slash books. And finally, if you want more Starlink goodness, I've put together just under 400 videos in the last 40 months, just for you. I'll put a link here. Don't click on it yet. This link is to a playlist with all the helpful how-tos, tips, tricks, what to do, what not to do, what to buy, what not to buy, and the why behind all of it. Because as we say, this channel has always been and always will be about the why. So let's jump into this article. I'll give you my commentary. And then after I want to hear from you down below, what do you think about all this? And if you're shy, that's fine. Put an emoji down there just so that I know that you actually watched, listened, whatever you're doing. <laughs> Anyways, it starts out by saying SpaceX Starlink version three satellites, a leap into the future of Internet. SpaceX is on the brink of transforming global internet access with the launch of its next generation version three Starlink satellites designed specifically for deployment via the Starship. These satellites are not just an upgrade. They are a quantum leap in satellite internet technology. That is true. An unprecedented surge of bandwidth. The version three satellites are set to redefine what's possible in terms of data transmission. Each satellite will deliver a colossal one terabits of download link speed and 160 gigabits of upload link capacity, a tenfold and 24 fold increase respectively over the version two mini satellites. This means that with each Starship launch, Starlink could add an astonishing 60 terabits to its network capacity, eclipsing the contribution of the Falcon 9 launches by a factor of 20. That is massive, guys. Absolutely massive. Technological marvels advanced computing and communication. Version three Starlink satellites incorporate next generation computers, modems, and sophisticated beam forming and switching systems. These enhancements promise not just speed, but also smarter data routing for a more efficient network. More efficient is so important. That's what brings down latency. I'll get into that in just a second. 
Laserlink revolution. With almost four terabits of combined RF or radio frequency and laser backhaul capacity, these satellites will communicate with each other and ground stations at speeds previously unimagined, ensuring data travels faster and with less latency. Once again, less latency. Important, very important. So they have a chart here. I'm gonna bring this up for you. Maybe I'll put it here, I'll put it here, whatever, so you can see it. Now, I modified this chart because some of the data that they had in there was old, and I just wanted to revise it to make sure that it is the current, that is as of today the beginning of January, 2025. So the version three satellites, as far as user downlink bandwidth, you can see it's one terabit, that is a ton, in comparison to about 200 gigabits. This is once again an average for the version two mini satellites. The version threes, when it comes to uplink, we're seeing 160 gigabits per second in comparison to the version twos at about 20 gigabits. Once again, massive difference. Laser bandwidth per channel, 800 gigabits for the version threes to 200 gigabits for the version two minis. You're looking once again, a four Xing of bandwidth. Combined backhaul bandwidth is definitely a major difference also. The version threes are coming in at four terabits, whereas the version two minis at 1.3. Once again, close to a four X massive. Satellites per launch. Now this is kind of interesting. It states 54 using the Starship, the new larger satellites, and 23 with the Falcon 9. The 23 is correct, but the 54, I don't know about that. I'm going to think it's going to be more closer to 90 to 100, possibly even more. And the reason being is that fairing is going to get larger. They're going to be able to stuff more in there. So they state 54, that's fine. I think it's gonna be more like 100, but we will see. And then as far as the mass goes of these satellites, you're looking at 1900 to about 2000 kilograms compared to 575 kilograms on the version two mini. So once again, we're seeing like a 4X of the size. So as you can see, it's a massive difference between the two satellites when it comes to capacity, but when it also comes to mass, they are massive. Pardon the pun. That's why they need the Starship and not the Falcon 9 to be able to place these into orbit. The article continues. What this means for Starlink subscribers. The introduction of the version three Starlink satellites promises a stellar upgrade for Starlink users. Enhanced speeds. Expect high definition streaming, lightning fast downloads, and lag free video calls as the network handles more data with less congestion. That is a major, major point there. Once again, more data, less congestion, faster speeds, more, 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 basically. Broader capacity. More users can connect without slowing down the network, particularly beneficial in densely populated or high traffic areas. Superior reliability. With advanced technology, the network stability and performance are set to reach new heights, ensuring consistent service worldwide. Global connectivity revolutionized. SpaceX's vision extends beyond mere technological advancement. It aims to erase the digital divide by making internet access a global right. The version three satellites are pivotal in this mission, promising to extend high-speed internet to the most remote and underserved as well as unserved locations on the planet. The future is now. As SpaceX gears up for the IFT-7 mission, the world watches with bated breath. This launch isn't just about adding satellites to the sky, it's about redefining our access to information, education, and opportunity. With each Starship liftoff, we move closer to a future where everyone, everywhere, can connect, create, and contribute like never before. This narrative is not just about technology. It's about the democratization of the digital world. The version three satellites are more than just hardware. They are the harbinger of an era where connectivity knows no bounds. And I agree with this 110% guys, absolutely is the case. Now, bear in mind, they were talking about IFT-7. I just talked about it at the very beginning of this video. IFT-7 is slated for 
January 10th at 4 p.m. This might fluctuate. It might move around a little bit. Okay, they do have a launch window, but I will be here for IFT7 as I was here for IFT6 and 5 and 4 and so forth. So definitely join me for the launch coverage. I absolutely love it and I love that you guys come and hang out with me and we sit there and chat about what is going on. So there is so much meat being put on the bones with this next launch. They're going to test to make sure the Pez dispenser is going to be able to launch out satellites, either dud satellites or actual satellites. It doesn't make a difference, but they're going to test that. Does it work? Does that door open up and then launch out once again, like Pez, those satellites? Once again, live or not. That is a major feat. Also, they're going to try to catch with Mechazilla the Super Heavy. So that's going to be another one. They've done it once, but the second time they ended up aborting and landing in the Gulf of Mexico. This time they're going to try to catch it. This is going to be an exciting one, guys. IFT7 is going to be exciting, and I hope that you share it with me. I wanna know what you think about all this. What do you think about the possibility of 1,000 gigabit or one terabit connection right from your SpaceX Starlink? That is just nuts, guys. Can you imagine that? Especially on the go somewhere. You're in the middle of a mountain and you're getting terabit connection. I mean, that's just, what? <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. So when they say that this is a revolution, this is something that is going to be massive, massive for the entire world. It is 100% the case in my personal opinion. I think that the ability for everyone to have access to the internet, no matter where you are, I think is just mission critical today. In an era of technology, I feel that people that do not have high speed internet are being left behind. It's not about having internet, it's about having high speed internet. When you are limited by your bandwidth and you're having to sit there and wait for things to, you don't wanna do it, right? Yes, you do have access, but it's not the same. The difference between low speed and high speed is night and day. That's why they call it the digital divide. The digital divide is not about having internet and not having. The digital divide is having high speed internet or broadband in comparison to not. For the last 25 years here at my location, AT&T has been providing 15 megabits down and 1.5 megabit up. 15, they're talking about a thousand. I mean, as it is right now with SpaceX Starlink, I'm getting anywhere from two to 300 megabits down in comparison to AT&T that's still to this day with their junk Uvers at 15 megabits. It's a travesty, an absolute travesty. Yet these companies like AT&T and there's plenty of others are being subsidized by the government year over year to do nothing or let's say next to nothing when it comes to pushing fiber out to the rural areas. Anyways, I vented a little bit. <laughs> I want to hear from you down below. What do you think about all this? Are you excited about it? Are you going to join me? I hope you do. Once again, subscribe. So when I go live, you will be notified of it before I go live. All right. So once again, we're talking about January 10th, less than a week away. Be here. I would appreciate that. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, throw it a thumbs up. That'll be very, very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, like I said before. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools and my merch and my tees and my shirts and my books and everything else. Pick something up. Help support me and my family. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay connected, and we'll see you, hopefully, for IFT7. Take care, guys. Love you all.